there, and it was it was then that it kind of you know started to light that fire and be like you know what because like quite honestly I came down on you know obviously coming back you're a little down on yourself and you know when something like that happens it just kind of reignites everything and if you can picture yourself there my belief is you can get yourself there and that's kind of how I'm seeing things right now I mean I can't control you know the writers the promoters I can't control the number of votes I get but all I control is the stuff I'm going to put out there and I'm going to do and I mean you know what I think I can I can get there I think I deserve to be there I think getting let go has made me that much better and given me that edge that you know uh, I was missing before the the quote unquote nice guy that was there before is you know I, I'm still respectful but like I said if I got to step on somebody to get ahead I'm going to do that and that's like no knock on anyone else that's just how I'm <laughs> feeling now because you know what I need to get ahead and I want to get there again because I think I deserve that shot and you know what John I think that is the attitude that you have to have and I think that is you know a realistic way to look at things you're not going to please everybody. You can't be everything to everybody, but you mm-hmm. can be, you know, what the do the best that you can as a person. And you know, when you came back here, I was concerned about you because I know you sort of distanced yourself a little bit from guys, and you were kind of in a little bit of a shell because I guess you're just dealing with the reality that you're back here. But I think, you know, it's happened many times where guys get released and they they tell you go work on what you've learned here and come back that much better. And I think. Uh, I think definitely you're a guy I could definitely see on television. I'm not saying that because you and I are buddies. I'm saying that because I think you have the tools. As long mm-hmm. as you continue to develop that personality and that edginess, I think uh, the sky's the limit. Um, yeah. One other thing is uh, I know you know we're talking a lot about WWE, but I know that uh, you have had a, a few conversations with, with TNA. I'm wondering um, what's going on there. Have there been any further conversations? Uh, n- not really. I mean, I was invited down to uh, just hang out at the shows and just, uh, you know, meet with some of the guys and, and, uh, but there really nothing was progressing there and never, never really, uh, got to anything serious anyway with TNA. And then, you know, of course I had the WFX thing going, which was, uh, which was a pretty nice ride. And I don't know if it's still going, but it led to something, um, that I thought I could possibly see going somewhere. Like I honestly believe that, the team of me, Johnny, and Jesse, Hollywood Love Guns, I, I really think that that can fit into any kind of a program, whether it be WWE, TNA, wherever. I think it has uh, different aspects and, uh, you know, offering different things uh, and, and entertainment. I mean, I don't know if anyone's seen some of the skits we did at the last show, um, but, you know, I thought they were pretty funny, some of the stuff we were doing. And, uh, you know, like I said, it, it it's something that I want to do. It's, uh, it's the John Cutler I want to portray you know, the edge and, and not the, the, you know, the homegrown nice boy because, I mean, nobody wants to see that. And quite honestly, me getting to be the heel in WFX really let me uh, unleash some of that inner aggression that I was actually really feeling. So it just kind of, you know, it was it was still me just turned up, you know. Yeah, I know guys like Charlie Haas, they were a little uh, they were a little hesitant when they said, you, you know, that you were turning heel and, uh and I think you really surprised a lot of people. And who knows, you may have even surprised yourself. But uh, I can tell you, you mentioned WFX. I talked to Mike Davidson. He said that uh, things in 2011, and I quote, not to quote Michael Cole, but he said, things are moving in a positive direction. So I think uh, that, uh, I don't think that's sort of the, I don't think WFX is dead and buried like some people like to think. But let me ask you this. Do you still speak with uh, Fair Play and Jess on a frequent basis? Uh, I mean, you know, we're not best of friends, but yeah, we uh, we we talk occasionally. Like I'll talk. I just finished talking to Johnny earlier this week uh, when he's getting ready for his Dr. Phil, and uh, you know, Jesse, I you know, I met up with a couple times, and you know, we still keep in contact. I mean, there's still guys on the WWE roster that I'll keep in contact, buddies of mine. I mean, you know, it's always good to have lots of friends in the business because you never know who's going to be around to. Uh, lend you that help in hand, you know, at some point we all need it, right? So right now uh, Johnny and Jesse are, you know, helping me out and being super great, and it's uh, it's really it's really nice to have something like that when you're needing it. Yeah, and who knows, you might need to take Ted DiBiase up on his offer when you need a place to stay. You never know. <laughs> now, uh, so uh, we, we, we won't keep you for too much longer, John. Just one more final question, and... Uh, of course, uh, 2010 has been a big year locally for a lot of guys. I mean, you have Kenny Omega uh, doing a lot of things in Japan. You had Danny Duggan going to Dragon Gate, WWE, Ring of Honor, Japan. I mean, you had a lot of guys locally doing a lot of great things. And you see 
sometimes the business locally gets a bad rap because people think, oh, you know, it's 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 Winnipeg or there's nothing good here. But I definitely consider yourself one of the bright spots here. Uh, what you. can the fans look forward to from John Cutler in 2011, and uh, what's the game plan moving forward? Uh, well, the game plan, I guess, is obviously, I'm, uh, you know, kind of tunnel vision towards this uh, getting on tough enough. I honestly think that I could uh, contribute pretty good to that show. I mean, I would, I'd be going to win, obviously, but I really think, uh, you know, getting the chance to be on uh, the reality TV, people would get to, you know, see that personality and charisma that they maybe thought was lacking before. Um, I mean, aside from that, you know, I you can't put all your eggs in one basket, so I'm going to keep, you know, doing my thing. Hopefully with WFX, we keep the Hollywood Love Guns going, and who knows where they're going to go. Um, you know, there's there is a, a, something going around right now I don't really want to say, but, you know, there's, there's an opportunity to go somewhere else uh, and work where I've never got to work before that's uh, presented itself. So, I mean... You know, the, the sky's the limits when it comes to, to next year, and I just want to kind of capitalize on whatever comes my way. And like I said, Tunnel Vision right now, w, uh, WWE tough enough and hoping to, to get a shot on there. Has anybody, any other local promotions uh, contacted you about using you on shows? Uh, I know that Andrew mentioned to me personally that I, I think he, he, you, were, you guys had talked about maybe doing that last show in November. Have, has there been any other uh, companies that approached you? Um, no, just CWE and WFX have been the main ones, and yeah, Andrew and I did talk. Um, but aside from that, no, the, nothing that I can really say as far as locally that I've talked to. Like, there's uh, the the one that I that I am looking at right now is isn't in Canada, and it's uh, it's out of Canada. But that's all I'll really say right now. But it's you know, like I said, it's uh, different promotions. I'll take really anything I can, but. As of right now, between work and the gym and training, you know, and, you know, concentrating on this one goal, trying to get on tough enough, I mean, I'm not really considering a whole lot else at this time, obviously. How uh, how important is it to, uh, you know, obviously you're in good shape. I mean, you've been down there. You've been uh, at a place where you can make a living doing this. I mean, how important is it to be an athlete, to take pride in what you do as far as your appearance and, and your conditioning and things of that nature? Uh, how does that give you a leg up on a lot of other guys? You, I mean, you got to make it number one, right? It's got to be a priority. Uh, eating right, going to the gym. I mean, you know, it's a joke, right? Say your prayers, train, vitamins, and all that. But really, when it comes down to it, that's what it takes. you got to make it a priority. Like, when you get up, you're, if you're going to work, you're going to hit the gym right after that. you got to keep watching wrestling. you got to keep watching tapes. you got to be, you know, practicing. At some point, you got to be back in the ring and doing it. I mean, it, it's got to be a, a priority to you if you want to make it work and then when you're actually down there you got to realize that that's that's your job but you know I'll, I'll say from my personal experience when I was down there I there wasn't one day where I actually felt like I was going to work like I enjoyed it so much that to me it was it was such a privilege to get to do because it did not feel like work and I think that's what everyone's goal in life is to kind of go to that job go to that place and you know actually do it and not feel like you're actually going to work you're just you're going there to hang out and have fun so that's that's kind of how I see it, and I think if you don't see it that way, then you know maybe sports entertainment really isn't for you. John, let me say this: if you don't make it as a wrestler, you should call Dan King. You'd be a great motivational speaker. Great motiv. Well, I did some work for him back when you know talking in schools. I had a lot of fun doing that, but I appreciate that, Wayne. You know. <laughs> well, John, we won't take we won't take too much of your time here, but. Uh, Wanted to thank you for calling in, being very candid with us, and answering uh, our questions uh, honestly. And uh, keep us in, in the in the loop uh, when you can talk about these other opportunities. Certainly, let us know, and we definitely like to uh, discuss them here on the air. And we wish you all the best. And uh, I think we'll have to get together at some point over the holidays. For sure, for sure. You know, everyone have a merry Christmas and happy New Year, of course. And I appreciate you guys having me on. I think this was my first time on uh, on the radio show, so it was a fun experience. And, uh, yeah, I guess the only other thing would be to get those people out voting. You know, go to uh, it's www.realitywanted.com slash J Cutler. And that's J as in the letter and my last name, Cutler. Go out there and vote for me. Help me get on there, people.
And, of course, we put a link. There's a link on wayneshaneshow.proboards.com. There's a link where you can go on there directly and vote for John Cutler for, uh, who knows, you could be seeing your, listening to your next WWE superstar. If you have an opportunity to see John Cutler here locally, make sure you get out there and do it. Who knows how much longer he'll be here in Winnipeg. But, uh, John, thank you again for calling in. We really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, bud. Take care. Bye.